Welcome back to Veggie Quest, where you get to design a puzzle with the goal of making these vegetables take as many turns as possible to solve it. We left off on this level where I was able to get a solution of 35 turns, but that only got me a two carat solution, and I want three. As a reminder that Larry the Cucumber here can move one square orthogonally and diagonally, and Wizard Mike can move a square horizontally and vertically and also teleport over a single wall. So the main score of this puzzle is getting Larry the Cucumber to go as long as possible, and I've done this by placing this button on the very far edge of the map, which is required to unlock the fork to allow him to go and get the carrot. If Larry's to go further, I have to add a distance without him being able to shortcut it, aka a horizontal or vertical distance. And I was thinking at the top I could add an extra horizontal length if he were able to round the corner like this. However, how does he not touch the fork? Well, if I take the fork and move it over here, then suddenly we got something good. Now Larry has to make an extra horizontal distance, and what does this look like for score? Terrible, because the wizard can just get in. But if I block this wall off, then the wizard could still go to the close carrot, so I almost have to make a path that doesn't let the wizard do that. Well, the idea is I have to make it impossible for the wizard to enter the right side, so only Larry the Cucumber can double back. And if I place this block, I don't think there's a combination of one block jumps that allows the wizard to get there. So now Larry can go the distance, I think this is a touch longer, leaving me at 37, which is still two carats. But I guess I could make this symmetrical on the left side. This looks symmetrical, Larry's got a bigger distance to cover, and if I could get... Even 39, that would be awesome. Yes! Three carrots, okay! The demon has been defeated, let's do more puzzles. These characters are different. The orange vegetable can only move one square horizontally and vertically. The potato butt cheeks knight can dash two squares in a direction. So if I were to run this, he just dashes towards the carrot, and obviously that's not okay. So basically, he's just the better version of the other guy, but the fact that there's two of them means that one can hit the button, and the other can run past the fork into the flag. Sorry, not the flag, the carrot. So I don't think it would be advised to make a maze like this, because he can just dash there and <laughs> not even get me close to winning. So I imagine I gotta set up more of a zigzag path. I also wonder if I should split them up where one goes all the way over here to get the button, and the other one goes very far around to get the flag. I mean, it's an idea. What does this look like, right? Carrot Boy goes to the button, and Knight gets the flag. 18 moves. Did I call him Carrot Boy? He's round, rotund even. I guess I could put the fork a little bit further away. Now he's gotta go longer past the fork. I got two carrots. Can I make the post fork journey even longer? That's pretty long. Oh, that makes this guy just do all the work. <laughs> 23, though, for just him. Mm, this looks a little longer. Not sure if it actually is. Oh, they have to split up now, so it must be longer. 24 again, but this feels a little cleaner somehow. Wait. Fork can be moved back. That might make it 25. Yes, it is. Three carrots. Oh, that feels so good to solve. What the? Bunnies? What are these? I'm not sure, but uh, Larry doesn't want to touch them. The bunnies a spawn of evil. Patrols in one direction, back and forth. Never try to fight it. It's a veggie killing machine. So I assume he will wait until the bunnies pass? Also, I only have dirt. No walls. Obviously, Larry can only walk on the dirt. Maybe if I just clear everything up, we can kind of get an idea of what I'm really working with here. Like, what if the bunnies just go this way? And then the way to win looks like this. This is impossible because the bunnies are blocking the path. Okay, so what if there's a waiting area up here? Oh, it makes Larry go a little longer. What if the path looks like this? Where he's just got to wait. Yeah, wait a long time. Okay. Still not even one carrot. Not even one. The issue here is I want to make Larry's path longer. But that makes the bunnies just get to him quicker. Uh, somehow making it shorter. Is there any way he can wait for the bunnies twice? No, because it's impossible for the bunny to catch up to Larry the Cucumber. Yeah, because he can go diagonal. That means he can always move to the right. It's impossible to design a path for Larry besides the first move that forces him to only go up and down. Well, what if there's a different resting spot for Larry? What if he has to wait for the bunnies to pass him, like, here? Would he go to it right away? 
What if he didn't have that luxury? What if he had to go like here? No, he still goes right away. What if the bunnies had to double back longer, making him wait even longer? Oh, wait, now we're getting somewhere. But let me actually try this idea where the bunnies still have to go longer, but Larry also has to go longer to wait. That's even better because Larry has to wait for the bunnies and then follow behind them two carrots. Oh, why does that work? <laughs> I didn't expect that to work. I thought he was not going to do anything. So let's see. He still has to follow the bunnies, but he's following them from further behind because he actually has to get behind them again. And he has to wait for them to bounce off the wall. But then wouldn't there be an even better spot if it went here? No, he just goes right away. Okay, so the difference between 16 moves is moving the tile over one. I see. I'm on to you, Veggie Tails. The next puzzle's got a lot of bunnies. And the Spud Warrior. Does he just die? I guess. We can't have the vegetables die because they only die if it's an impossible puzzle. They're pro gamers. I assume the bunny only goes back and forth until it hits a wall. So, that's gonna be tough. Well, I feel like I gotta make him go diagonal, but I don't know how the bunnies get in the way of that. Like, maybe he has to hide up here and then go behind the bunny. This is impossible. Right, because he needs to actually be able to go around the bunny. So he hides and then goes around it like that. So maybe I need to apply that technique to other levels or other parts of this level. I guess I could do something similar here. Gotta wait behind the second bunny and then wait behind the third bunny. Yeah, let's see. Okay, so wait behind the first bunny and then wait, go in front of the second bunny and then go in front of the third bunny, go in front of the fourth bunny. Okay, three carrots real quick. Good puzzle. Oh, a little pre-build here. Uh, what? I delete stuff? Wait, how do you beat this level? Like, I gotta place a button down, but that's impossible, apparently. Can the bunnies press a button? Oh, they make a baby? So if they meet to make a baby, does the baby go down, press the button? They make a ton of babies. And then they split off again? Wait, what the hell is this mechanic? This is so cursed. What if it's here? So it goes and bounces and then bounces and... Okay, it takes a little longer. So it's like, I gotta pick the spot that bunnies can get to eventually, but takes the longest time. Well, it looks like to me that a bunny may take a long time to reach this square. Yeah, so it makes a new one. They keep reproducing. Okay, that's two carats worth. It's so hard to tell where it goes last. Maybe I need to watch this on a slower speed. The bunny hits a wall, and then they baby make. At this point, I've already covered most of the tiles. Here, I've covered everything except for the three in the corner and a lot of the bottom row. The first of the bottom row, second, third, and then fourth. So that means this is the hardest square to get to. And that is three carrots, so that's the case. Wow. And now I can place my own bunnies. Larry the Cucumber. Okay, there's no walls to place, but he still has to wait for bunnies. Like, let's say I have a bunny that's here and here. Or actually, if I want to prolong it, they could face this way, the opposite direction, so they got to move and then meet each other. And then I'll just say I place the button here for now. That's impossible. Button here, is that possible? No. What if the bunnies were here? Will they mate on the second row now? No. How about this? How about this? I just put a button here, and we see how the bunnies... Oh, they just never meet. Because they pass over each other. So if I want the bunnies to mate in the second row, they would have to start like this, right? Ah, there we go. That took 19 steps, and the thing isn't even like a third filled. I gotta get like 60 steps for this? Okay, hypothetically, how long does it take for like the button to be hit here? Oh, pretty long actually, that might be part of it. Okay. Significantly longer, but still not winning. Oh, wait a second. I just realized because I can rotate the bunnies, I could have a scenario where like one is vertical and one is horizontal. And actually, if I have them be path lengths seven and six, I could have it be take a long time before they meet up. Well, when they do mate, it'll be on this square, which will make a bunny go in the direction of the paths that currently exist. But then wouldn't we eventually get like bunnies hitting that button? No? I really thought I was onto something here. I'm just thinking it's crazy that these bunnies allegedly never meet up. 
Would, hypothetically, this allow the bunnies to meet up? It actually would. Okay. It just takes a massive amount of time for them, them to meet up. I guess they just never met up in the previous arrangement. But now, there's the first bunny. And now we know what's the longest journey to get here. That's not it! That's just two carrots! Are you kidding me? That's got to be close, though. Let me count the number of times the vertical bunny hits the wall. One. Two. Three. Four. And then they mate on the fifth one. Can I make that number bigger? I guess I could use math to figure out which moves each bunny will be at the meetup square. So if the bunny starts here, he'll be there on move zero, and then move 10, and then move 20, 30. Here, it'll be on there on move one, 11, 21. So I guess wouldn't it make sense to have him first facing down? So he'll be there on move nine, 19, 29. If they were to mate, it should be on the largest number, right? And then what about the bunny going left and right? What if the bunny starts here? And then he'll be on this mating square on the first, followed by the 11th and 13th, then 23rd, 25th, 35th, 37th, 47th, 49th. That's a pretty long time. And honestly, that might be just what's needed. 49, and then a lot of splits takes a long time. 80, the triple carrots solved with math. Damn, that felt good. Uh, this seems tough. Wait, what? Actually, how is this even possible? Like, if I press done... Oh, he can just teleport over the fork. I can place as many bunnies as I want. And one more fork. Oh, good god. And all the objects that are currently on the map are unremovable. They're locked in. Oh, and I can place unlimited walls. Wait, this is so big of a design space. Looking closely, this here is really interesting. Note that the wizard doesn't actually go to the carrot until it can teleport over the bunny. Probably because it can't teleport over the fork normally, which is why it waits at the beginning. Wait, 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 wait. Now it goes because it can time its crossing with the bunny pushing down the fork. So that's why I'm given another fork. How can I use that to my advantage? I guess I could do another fork with its own bunny guardian? However, I have to make sure he doesn't get to this square, so I gotta block it off with not one but two walls, so he can't teleport over it. Does that help? Well, it seems like he has to wait a bit longer. Oh, hold on, I synced it up poorly, though. I don't want him to teleport back to back. So if I put the bunny here, he has to wait much longer. Like, much longer. Okay, because he's gonna do it all in one burst. Well, that gets me one carrot. Still not enough. I wonder if I can set up something similar to a previous level where I have one bunny on a 12 long cycle. Like if I were to use this row, the vertical bunny will reach there on turns 6 and 10 and then 18 and 22, so on and so on. Uh, even numbers specifically. So then I would want it to be even numbers here. Let's see. Hopefully it'll take a long time for them to meet up. Yes, it's taking a long time. That's good. Okay, they finally got there. Just two carrots now. Three carrots? No, 43 at two carrots. I'm pretty sure this is an even better one, and I think I can block these off to have them take even longer. Because it looks like Bunny reached there the last chance. Here it comes. Yes, 47 carrots. Sorry, 47 moves, three carrots. It seemed like it made sense, but I didn't fully think about it. I wouldn't be surprised if you could do better. What? Excuse me, what is this? It's a portal. I can teleport. Hmm, so we have a non-Euclidean map shape now. So I could have it zig and then go into the portal. I assume portaling is mandatory. And then I would zig back and forth. This looks a little suboptimal. Here's see how it goes. Yep. Oh, you can double portal, I see. Well, so I'll block this off, obviously. Okay, try that again. Make them kind of zig back and forth here. Well, it's only a two carat solution. That's weak. I don't actually know how I'd expand this. It feels like the bottom has to be shaped like this, but I guess I should maybe look into proving it. Because let's say hypothetically, I just make a mad dash for the portal. I have to come out the other portal. The veggie has no reason to then go to the bottom. Unless if I completely block him off, which is obviously impossible. What if I do something like this? Can he portal? Yeah, okay. That's important to know. You don't need to move on the portal to activate it. Simply being on it at any point in time activates it. So it really is one half than the other half. And does portaling count as a move? It does. So because I had to portal back and forth, that caused an extra distance. Maybe that's where 
I, I need to get the extra move from. Like maybe I gotta do 13 moves and then portal and then portal back and then do another 13. Is that right? No, yes, yes, that is right. The extra portal move got me there. Yeah, that's all it takes. That's a lot of portals. Some of them have weird corners. Oh, it's to denote that it's a separate set of portals. So there's just a pair of each of them. Interesting. That's the freaking cucumber man. Okay, so I want him moving horizontally and vertically. See, I kind of want to just start him along the edge like this. Force him to go up, but then he'd go in. I mean, this is my first drop. It doesn't look good, probably because it's bad. But let me just see how long... Oh, God, he can just skip there. No, 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 no. Try that again. I mean, it's probably not even going to get me one carrot. Oh, it does, but only barely. I'm going to try a totally different pathing, because that just doesn't make any sense. What if he goes straight up, and then straight back down to here? Then he goes straight down again. Got to make sure this is blocked off. And I guess I could force him to portal? No, I could force him to double portal. Yeah, that's this stuff. Maybe I need to force him to double portal a lot. Or he could just skip the portal, but that still gets me 17. But actually, no, no, I could force him to portal like this. This should get me 18, I think. Yeah, actually, that's three carrots. Okay, not bad. Well, doing more of this might make my brain hurt, so I think I'm going to call it. Let me know if you want to see more. Hope you guys enjoyed watching. I apologize that the actual demo is not out, but I could always play more if you want. So see you all in the next video. Hope you all have a wonderful day and peace.